Hi, everybody, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing something a little different because we had our alcohol marker coloring workshop on Sunday, and we had some technical problems at the beginning. So I decided after watching the video back that it would be far better for me to just record the beginning of the video again so that everybody who wasn't there and is just watching this video won't be completely confused. So we'll just start from the beginning and do part of the video now, and then I'm going to edit it into the remaining part of the second half that was live. So the first thing is just to look at the first page of the handout. Now, a lot of you who were registered actually have the handout. And if you do, you can look at it with me. If you don't have the handout, there's two ways to get it, and I'll explain that in a minute. If you don't have it, I also will put the links that are on here on the screen on the video so that you can click on them and link to what we're talking about. First of all, I wanted to point out right here that it says past alcohol markers workshop and that is because last summer in july i think or august i gave a workshop i led one on alcohol marker use that was everything but blending so i think we looked at 30 something cards that had all kinds of uses of alcohol markers on them but it didn't have blending for coloring flowers and that's what we're doing today however if you want to get a really wide range of everything you can do with your alcohol markers watch today's video and then go back and find this one on my youtube channel and watch that one now the way that is the easiest way to get handouts including the one from my past worker workshop is right here my facebook card making community and so i do have a group on facebook not everybody is on facebook and i realize that so i'll give you plan b in a minute but if you are on facebook i would really appreciate it if you would consider joining my facebook community we're more than just another group where you can post a card it's really a group of people who are committed to supporting and encouraging each other it's an extremely uh positive and really uplifting place to kind of hang out in the card making world and so if you would like to do that i do have a link on here as well for joining that and i will put that also on the screen for those of you who don't have the handout and that's what i was going to say if you belong to my facebook group uh, in the file section on our main home page, there's a files tab and all of the workshop handouts that I've done are all in there in PDF format that you can download for yourself. And then finally, down here, it says ordering supplies from today's workshop, which basically are the all to new alcohol markers. Of course, you don't have to order anything. But if you do want to order some from all to new, I have a link here on my blog, which is a supply list. And I would really appreciate it if you would consider going through me if you are going to purchase them from all to new because I get a very small percentage, but um, I really appreciate that. So this is another live link and I will put it up on the screen for you as well. So basically this first page just says, don't forget I have another alcohol workshop that we did last summer. Don't forget about subscribing to my YouTube channel and joining my Facebook group. And here's a link to supply to order supplies from today's video. So that's pretty much it. So let's just move on. Okay, the first thing that we talked about on Sunday at the workshop was choosing the correct paper. Now what I did was that I tested nine different papers that I had around my craft room and I tested them on four different levels. The first one is bleeding. Now what bleeding means is if you are coloring with an alcohol marker, I better put something under this. If you're coloring, bleeding refers to how much that coloring goes through the paper 
and onto the back side and even onto what you have underneath the paper. And here I'm just doing some plain lines. Let's see what happens here. You can see, I think, that it actually did bleed through onto the paper below. And you can see how much that bled through on the back. So the problem with this is that you just do not want to have that kind of a bleeding effect. And it depends on the paper. And we're going to see that in a minute. So this is bleeding. That's the first thing that I that I rated all the papers on is how much does the ink bleed through? The second thing is feathering. So if I draw a rectangle with my pencil and I fill it in, I'm not doing a good job here. I'm just trying to give you the principle. If I fill it in, how much will the ink spread on this paper and actually end up spreading so that it cover goes past by the time it dries it goes past my lines you really don't want to have this when you're coloring flowers because you have that black outline or a gray outline or even if you're doing a no line coloring you want it to stop at specific areas and you don't want it to be bleeding out on it so that's called feathering and that was the second thing that I rated it on. And then the third thing is called saturation. And this is important too. And here's what I did. I put down a light, a light covering of one color. Again, this is not a perfect little rectangle here. I'm just giving you the concept. Then you go in back with the same color and put a second layer all the way down. Then you go back in a third time and put a third layer. Now what you're going to see here is on this paper, which is just basically printer paper, very thin, you're going to see that you can see the distinction between my first layer and my second layer. But this third layer just gets lost in the shuffle because this paper saturates so quickly that you can't see anything more than the first two layers. So if you're layering in a flower, and you're doing three layers or maybe even four, this paper scores a zero, you know, on, on that. Well, I put it as a two, but that's because it's right here at two. But you'll see with some other papers, they're rated much higher. So you want to have something that can come down here in the three to four to even five range where you can see the distinctions between the different layers. So that's called saturation. And then finally, you just feel the paper. And that is called tooth. And what that refers to is how smooth the paper is. The smoother the paper, the better it is to use with alcohol markers. So I took these four areas and I rated them from zero to five on each of these nine papers. And on the handout, you will see that I actually have all the results here layer, uh, listed for you. So you don't have to uh, do anything on your own. Of course, you probably have different paper, but I'm just showing you some comparisons of all of these papers and how they rated and which ones came in as being the best papers to use that I have. And I'll tell you what I normally do use. So here, just really quickly, we have regular copy paper. Now, on the camera, you're not going to be able to see these distinctions very well. But um, I did it, and I can see it right here. So I'm just telling you, 
the total, it got a zero in bleeding because it bled straight through. It got a two in feathering because it did creep a little bit past my lines, a two in, separ in saturation because it took two layers to separate saturate it, but it got a five in smooth because it's very smooth, but it totaled nine. So here's a thicker copy paper and it came in 12 matte photo paper you know just like photo paper but not the shiny one and it came in 12. 80 pound cardstock came in better at 14. all to new watercolor paper came in at 15. now here at 110 pound cardstock that was pretty darn good and it came in at 16. that isn't bad it isn't bad. It's not the ideal, but if you have 110 cardstock in your stash, uh, you can use it and get pretty good results with alcohol markers. And then these two came out both 18. And what's funny about that is that they both are Strathmore papers that I happen to have. And uh, one is the Strathmore marker paper, which looks like this. I have a small tablet of it. And then the other one is the one that I choose to use 90% of the time, and that is Bristol. And it has two, two different kinds of Strathmore Bristol. One says vellum surface and one says smooth. And I like the smooth. Not only is it really good for alcohol markers, but it's really good for ink blending. So this is my favorite paper for both of those things. It's Bristol Smooth. And you can see that they both came out 18. They were identical on their on their ratings. And here you can see that on the saturation levels, we got down four levels before it started uh, blending in here with the fifth, before it was completely saturated. So when you're wanting to blend alcohol markers, these are the both of these papers came out really good with four levels that you could blend. They got a five on feathering because it, they didn't, I went outside the lines here, but it didn't creep past the lines. A four on blending because you can see on the back, it came through a little, but it didn't come through onto the paper behind, below it and a five on smoothness. So I would really recommend either one of these, Strathmore Bristol Smooth or Strathmore Marker Paper, but, this is up to you. So you test your papers in the same way, and you probably have some kind of marker paper at home, and you can see how it rates compared to the things that I tried. And so if they're in this range down here, even the 110 cardstock isn't bad. If they're in this range down here, you can surely use them with your alcohol markers. And it's so important because a lot of times when we're not successful with the markers, you end up feeling like it's your fault. You know, you did something wrong. Not necessarily. Sometimes it's the paper's fault. So you want to make sure that you're using the right paper. And that um it's just really really important and so now we're going to move on to the next section which is just about some basic uh techniques to use with alcohol markers okay the first thing that i wanted to talk about before we get into specific techniques is inks in the alt new line the ink that works with alcohol markers and doesn't streak is the permanent black ink. So you can stamp with this and be very confident that it will not streak when you use your markers. However, having said that, you must have it totally dry before you start coloring. So you need to stamp it and leave it for a while to make sure that the ink is totally dry or use your heat tool or whatever um, and test it somewhere to make sure because uh, it does take a little while to, to dry and if it isn't dry it will smear but if it's dry it will not and that is the Altenew permanent black there's a lot of other black inks on the market that work fine with alcohol markers but because Altenew is sponsoring this for me I'm telling you what theirs is but also in the Altenew line is obsidian pigment ink and you can say see on the bottom it says exceptionally crisp and i would say that i love this ink i love it for using it for everything however it 
it gets all smeary if you try to use your alcohol markers with it. But what you can do is stamp with this and then heat emboss with clear embossing powder and then it won't do that. So the flowers that I use as examples in this workshop have all been stamped with obsidian pig pigment ink because I like the detail that it gives. And then I've clear heat embossed all of them and then it will not smear either. So that's your choice. But now we're gonna move on and talk about just some basic techniques. And these are all in the handout as well with some explanations, but the first one, oh, and I meant to say, I, I said in the live workshop, uh, to prepare for this, I went and took a couple classes from some commercial artists on alcohol markers, and they don't use them necessarily for the same ways that we do uh, in card making or particularly with florals. They do a lot of work with alcohol markers, and I'm going to show you an example later on in the video um, that even the people that were at the workshop didn't see because I, I've added it to the video, but they do all kinds of uh, commercial illustration and things. And I wanted to see what they had to say about alcohol markers that kind of goes beyond what we would normally discuss. And so um, anyway, that's what I'm going to show you here. And I just have a piece of regular 110 cardstock. So it's, it's going to show you how this works on this. So the first one is pressure. And all of this, again, is itemized on the worksheet. So on a handout. So pressure just means you can get different variations based on how much you put pressure on your marker. If I put very light pressure, I can get very fine lines or pretty fine lines. If I put heavier pressure, it becomes thicker. Now this is using the brush tip. This is using the brush tip. So pressure causes different different looks based on just how much pressure you're putting down. And so if I go back to just a fine line and then I go back to heavy and then I go to fine or medium, you can practice and regulate that. The other thing, which I also show on the second half of this in the actual workshop, but actually comes under pressure is making raindrops or teardrops. And you just press the, the brush tip down, just like that. Just down and up and down and up. And you can make teardrops. You can make them into flowers. See if I can do it. I think I have to turn my paper to do it. Which is really cool, actually, when you think about it. You can make little flowers just as easy as that from just putting your brush tip down and make a flower. So this is very cool. But so the first, this first technique is all pressure and you can experiment with it on your own. The second way to get alcohol markers to fill an area is called streaking. And this, you just put down lines straight across with the same amount of pressure and leaving no space. Now I'm pressing pretty hard here. So the color is going down pretty dark. If I lighten it up and put light streaks, I don't know about on the film, but you can see this, you can see some of the white of the paper through it when I do it very lightly. And so this is called streaking and it's a way to fill in a space evenly and quickly, usually big spaces. So we don't normally use this on a flower petal, but if you have a big space you wanna fill and you want it to be even, this is one way of doing it. Okay, next method is another way for filling in something um, and having it be highly saturated. In other words, you're really wetting the paper. And to do that, you're gonna do little circles like this. Circle, circle, circle. In a line and then circle back. 
not leaving any white circle back pushing pretty hard not hard hard but you know putting pressure on there circle back what this does is it evenly fills in a space and it makes it quite saturated and we're going to talk about the importance of that when we start actually coloring flower petals so hold your questions on this and why we would use it and when we use it coloring flowers but this is another way to color a solid area and it gets highly saturated now actually i like this one better than i like this because in this you really do see streaks although there's probably sometimes you would want to see streaks maybe doing a roof line or something like that but this when it dries is pretty pretty hard to distinguish lines or anything in it and it covers it completely so this is this is the circling technique here um and you do use it the circular technique in coloring flowers now the next technique is similar to what in fact it is what i did when i was doing testing on all the papers you need to realize that you can actually layer not blend layer all using one color. So if I do some really light, really light streaks across here, oops, there we go. Oh, I'm getting narrower, so I better pull it out here a little bit. Okay, I'm just made some really light streaks. Now I'm going to go in with a second layer, just like I did earlier. And you can see how it's darker. Then I'm going to go in with the third layer. And then even a fourth, but I don't know on this 110 cardstock if you'll be able to see the fourth, maybe if I push harder. So now let me hold this up for you. Here you see, this is the same color laid on top of itself. It's called layering. One coat, two coats, three coats, and even four coats. And what this will show you is that you don't have to, to have three different colors to blend in your flower petals. Yes, it helps to have a light, a medium, and a dark. However, you could even blend the same color uh, by putting additional layers on top of it um, with just one color so experiment with this because you can you can layer it more than you think and that's why that saturation um, the saturation of the paper means such well why it's such a big deal is because if you've got a saturation level that's up in here and it's sat highly saturated once it's laid down and you try to put another layer on you can't distinguish between the layers then it kind of defeats the purpose but when you've got a really good paper and you do this you will be able to see the different uh, layers and their saturation and it will show that it's a different shading in in your flower even if it's all just done with one color. So experiment with that and see how it works for you. Now, the next thing is flicks. And this is such a poor example that I put into your handout. But what we're going to do, and this we use all the time with flowers, is I like to hold my, my marker kind of almost vertical and then you just put it down and you flick it like that put it down and flick put it down and flick just like that can you see how the tops of the flicks are more narrow than the bottom i will zoom in on it when i edit this so you just put it on the paper with a little pressure and then lighten up the pressure as you flick now, some people say move your wrist. I don't know if I move my wrist or I don't. I know I move my, my hand like this. So, and they're not all perfect as you can tell. 
but practice. Just take a piece of plain paper like this and practice till you can get them looking fairly uniform. And this makes it look like I need a lot of practice because as I'm doing this, they're not all that uniform, but I have the basic idea and they don't have to be perfect. This is, this is such a rule of mine. Don't aim for perfection. Nobody's going to know in the end, it's going to look fabulous. So just, just practice and do the best you can and don't get too hard on yourself. Just put it down and flick like that. Put it down and flick. Like that. So practice this because these flicks are really important in terms of filling in flowers. Um, but as you'll see, when we do fill in the flowers, there are other options as well. Now, this is an example of where I blended three of the same color, not the same colors, but three colors from the same family. So in Altenew, um, in Altenew inks, they have color families. And like this is a Sweet Dreams where there's a light and then a little bit darker, a little bit darker and a dark four colors all in one, one family. Well, that makes it a lot easier for me. I know people with Copics um, can blend them and I have a, I have a, um, a link I'm going to give you of, of a Copic like hexagon chart, but I don't have them because they were really expensive for me to buy and try to get enough of them. So, and I got associated with Altenew. So I like Altenew's markers because of these families. It helps me to blend within a family and know that it's gonna all go together. And I think that especially if you're a beginner, that's a great idea. Plus they're matched to their inks and that really helps too. But anyway, on this example, this is taking the light, a medium and a dark of the one color family and blending it all together. So that's called blending. This is called layering and this is called blending. And then I have an example here. I just drew out a flower petal and this is blending between two different colors. Absolutely, totally different, not in the same color family, but a teal and a purple. And I will tell you this again as we do our flowers, but I would do this in lighter colors than what I attempted here because this is a lot harder to do than if you do it with light colors. But the techniques, just to review, the techniques are pressure, streaking, circular, whoops, I need to get it into the, into the frame. Pressure, streaking, circular, layering, flicks, blending in one color family and blending between two color families. If you understand all of this and you practice your flicks, you are set to go. So now we're going to go and connect to our original uh, filming from Sunday and the live workshop and move on to actually coloring some flowers. This first example of a flower that, that I wanna show you and this technique, I'm kind of going from easiest to hardest. And once again, we're talking at a basic beginner level. We're not talking at a lot of complex anything today with other, other things added on top. We're just doing really basic. We did this, if you guys were at that other alcohol marker thing last summer, do you remember doing this? It's kind of a, it kind of turns out looking like watercolors. Does anybody remember that? Maybe not. Let me pick my two colors here and I will show you what I'm talking about. And this is super easy to do. And it's something you can do as beginners without having to worry about um, anything complex. So can you see how there's two colors in there, pink and orange blended together? Is you take your one color, always work on one petal at a time, no matter what you're doing, because you don't want the ink to dry out because the way that alcohol markers 
work is that you have to get the paper saturated enough, not to where it goes to the other side, but saturated enough that it stays wet because when it's wet is when it blends. So if you're having trouble with it blending, it could be that your paper is either oversaturated so it's just not absorbing any more ink or it's that your, your ink is too dry and it hasn't um, it doesn't have the ability to blend well with another marker. So, so you work one petal at a time so that you're, you've got a wet surface all the time. So for this method, you just color it in um, with one color, the whole thing, and you don't have to be picky about how you do it, but you do want it saturated. So I'm gonna just go over with those circles like I showed you to get it really pretty saturated like that. Okay. Somebody wants to know what colors you're using. This is um, pink diamond. And then I'm gonna use um, Sunkissed. On this one, I use the um, orange cream. So this may turn out different. Now I want the upper part to be orange. So all I'm doing is adding it on top, but because it's saturated and because I'm going fast here, I might go outside the lines a little and hopefully you'll forgive me. It blends them together. And then what you do is you take the first one and you just color over the whole thing. No big deal. I mean, just fit, no fancy coloring, no flicks, just, just saturation. And look at that, how that, can you see how that, can you guys see how it's set, how it's, how it is, um, blended there. Let's do another color with it. Maybe I'll take purple, see what that looks like. But you have to have it wet enough that the colors blend together just on top of each other without any fancy flicks or anything. So this is a way to color something just gradient with two colors without doing any kind of fancy anything. Just make it wet enough. Now I'm going to try a um, Let's see here, lavender fields. This is experimental because I haven't done it with this, but and I'm just gonna add this lavender fields on the top here, kind of like that to kind of do the top. And then I'm gonna take the pink one and go back over it. Let's see how that works over the whole thing. And you can go back and forth and back and forth, but okay, can you see how that did that, um, a gradient with the pink and the purple? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, this way is called fake watercolor because it kind of looks like watercolor when it's dry. It kind of looks like, how did they do that? It doesn't really look like normal alcohol coloring and it doesn't really look, here's the dry one. And it doesn't really look like watercolor but it does kind of look like watercolor so they call this um you know like faux watercolor with alcohol but what i call it is if you want to do something quick and easy and still have a blend in it it's a great method to know it's one of those things in your toolbox not it isn't everything it isn't most detailed as much as you want some of them to be but it is a method that you know that you can use quickly if you need to. Or if you're a beginner, you can do something like this so easy and then feel like, hey, I did something. I accomplished something. And so, you know, that's important too. You, you, you have to be able to feel good about yourself and just having something easier to do like that with no big complexities is always a good thing. So... Do you guys understand that? Or do you want me to show you again? Or do you understand how to do it? Just type in the chat. Now you can see those a little bit better as they're drying. Yeah. Right? No, nothing in the chat. And we have a few thumbs up. All right, is everybody OK with that? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so that's the first one and it's the easiest one. Now we're gonna come to blending with three markers from the same color family. And so you can see that this is, this is blended out with a, 
a darker medium and light marker. Let me get three of them from the same family here. I, I, I need my glasses on. I can't read these. Okay, I'm going to do the pink one that I had, the pink diamond and pink alicious and rubellite. But it doesn't matter, just three markers from the same family. Now, when I do mine, I'm just going to tell you how I do mine. And by the way, I do not claim to be this perfect colorist I, in any way, shape, or form, but I am sharing what I've learned with you, and it comes out good most of the time. So that's, that's what I'm here to do is share with you what I've learned from a lot of different experimentation and a lot of lessons that I've taken. So hopefully you will find something to help you in the middle of this too. Okay. And again, I kind of learned a different way of coloring when I watched these professional artists and how they do it. So I'm going to show you the way that I learned with them, which may be different than what you've seen on other alcohol marker tutorials. And you know, the bottom line is do what works for you, right? That's just kind of the bottom line of everything. Um, it's art. You do what looks good to you. But because of that saturation that we were just talking about in this one, where I said you need to get it fully saturated enough that the markers blend, um, it's kind of the same with that too, with this too. So what they said is just take your lightest marker, this is the pink diamond, and do what we just did in the other one. And don't worry about flicking yet just get a base light color on there. Now in this today, we're not talking about leaving highlights up here on the petals or anything, because again, we're at a beginner level. So I think I'll have to do another one to talk about those kinds of things later. But today I'm just showing you basics. Okay, I've got a nice level there. I've got my markers here, light, medium, dark. So then I'm going to take my dark one and start down here at the base. And I'm sorry that the camera, you know, it's hard to do it, but I'm going to start making flicks down here with the darkest one. And I'm just going to make flicks from the center out. And you can kind of see how they're going out here. Okay, you see that? That's the dark. Now I'm going to go to the medium and I'm going to work from the medium and it's go into the darker area and flick. And what it does is it takes the darker color, mixes it with the medium one and brings it further out as far out as I want it to go by flicking. Okay, do you see that? Now we're gonna go with the lightest and we're gonna flick from the top down. We're just gonna make little flicks like that because you don't want to go outside the lines and you want to fill in this space between the other flicks. And then if you still think that it needs to be blended, you can go over with the lightest marker and like just totally blend it out like that. And then you have a blend of all three. Now, when I'm looking at that, I see, oh, I don't think there's enough of the mid range in there. So I'm going to go back in while it's still wet and add some of the mid range. And then I'm going to blend it with the lighter one again up here at the top. Okay, now you see that? Okay, does that make sense to you guys? It you does. start, huh? It does make sense. You start with the light one and you lay down a layer, not anything heavy, but just enough to get the paper wet. Because remember, things won't blend. And if you go in here with the darkest one on the bottom on dry paper, it's not going to blend as well because it's going on a dry surface. And then when you try to blend it with the next one, it's not going to blend as well because it's, it's dry. So you want to lay it down on something that's already wet. So I'm making these little flicks. Now I'm going to take the middle one and do flicks out from the bottom and just kind of overlap them and make it straight up the car, up the pedal a little bit more. And then take the lighter one and just kind of do it in between those. 
and then you can blend it out. And then you can look at it and say, well, yeah, this needs to be blended more up here. And you always blend with the lighter one. So if I wanted to blend between the darker, if I have the darkest one down here, this is on dry paper, remember, but if I have the darkest one and then I put the middle one on, and then I thought that wasn't blending well enough, I would use the lighter of the two that I've got together to blend it more. You don't want to use the darker one to blend. So if I'm blending the darkest with the medium, I'm going to use the medium one to blend it out. And if I'm blending the medium with the light, I'm going to use the light one to blend it out. So there's another petal. Can you see that? Does that make sense to you how to do it? Yes. I hear you, Lori, but I, I need to send me raise your hand or do something if this is making sense to you. Yes, that's what. Yeah. OK, uh, I'm, I'm getting th a bunch of thumbs up. OK, let's try one more petal just to say we did. This is really basic, so we're just coloring this in. And again, why do we do this? And that made so much sense when I saw this on these classes. I'm like, well, yeah, because it doesn't they don't blend unless they're on a wet surface. And yet I see a ton of people who don't do this. So and I didn't do it before, but now this makes sense to me because it's like, yeah, you have to make it wet. And that's why the saturation and all those things we talked about with the papers means a lot, because if it doesn't hold a lot of ink, it's not going to make the blending as good. OK, I'm not doing the center of the flower here or anything. I'm just showing you how to do this. I'm not paying attention to making this flower look perfect. But can you see how I'm flicking this? You just, if you practice your flicks on another piece of paper, like we were doing earlier, just to kind of get comfortable with the motion, then, um, oh, and you know what? Let's try one. For those of you who don't have a brush nib, let's see what we can do with just the, just the, um, just the, the, uh, regular nib on here that don't have a brush tip. Because remember we were saying you guys can only do kind of straight lines. Let's see what happens. Let's see, I'm gonna pick the smallest one because I don't wanna spend all my time on this. I'm just gonna color it with this nib. Same principle, get it wet. And I, it's gonna take more coloring on this because it doesn't dispense as much ink at once as the brush tip does. Somebody says, I think I did it. Oh, yay. Yay, yay. Well, the more Somebody you practice. Said, yeah. Somebody said, great to learn these tips. Excellent explanation for blending. Love awesome. this. Standing. Thank you for the feedback. I super need it because I don't know, you know if I'm explaining it well enough or not, unless you tell me. So I did the just kind of straight lines out with these nib tips because I can't do real flicks. And then let's see here. And then I'm going to blend it out again with the with the lightest one. Same process, just not using the official flicking. OK, what do you guys think? Can you see that? That blended pretty good, didn't it? It blended, it blended there. You know, this is the one I just did with the nibs. Now I might be able to take the medium one. Let's see which one is the medium one. Now I need to figure it out. Let's see, it doesn't have a cap on it. That's the dark one. This is the medium one. So I might be able to, oops, I want this end just to feather this out a little bit more. You know, you can play with it. That's the other thing that's cool about alcohol when you start messing with it is that because you can layer them and they have to be wet, but they will mix when they're wet, you can keep going in and adding different, you know, like changing it up a bit if you're not happy, but look at how well that blended. That blended really well doing that. Mm-hmm with the nibs. So if all you have is the nibs or you don't feel like you're all that competent yet in doing the flicky thing, you can just do those straight lines and, and work with it and it'll work. So that's good news, huh? 
Somebody I said think. the three colors they chose aren't blending as well as yours, but I'm getting it. I'm using Copic. And okay. somebody earlier, earlier said Copics are difficult to figure out which colors blend together. But um, say, uh, was it Sandy um, Allnock has a hex chart that helps you yes. with that. Yes, yeah, I somebody love her. said that in the chat. I love her. She, she has great things. And I have seen her hex chart. And it does help. But boy, oh boy, I, I, I don't know. Like I said, buying four colors together that I know are going to work are kind of a good thing for me. But that's just me. Now I'm going to switch to purple because if you'll see, I'm going to take a sip here of my drink for a second. Okay, so if you look at your handout, the first one we did was the watercolor blending, which is the easiest way to do it. And the second one, which we just did, was blending with three colors in the same color family. Now, this one, we're going to blend with three colors in the same color family. But if you look at this to this, you can see this is the same flower, right? I'm using the Garden Delights. I forgot to show you which one, the Garden Delights flowers. I chose these because they're open petals, they're easy to color, and they're smaller so they don't go way out here because it just would take too much time to color them. But same stamp, same flower, which one looks more, more realistic? The purple or the pink? I like the purple. What does everybody else think? Purple. I vote purple, purple. Right, right, Somebody right. Somebody said pink. Okay, well, the reason that this one looks more realistic, you know, if you want to look at it that way, is that, look what's different on it. There's more contouring in the petals up here. See those little contouring marks that are in the petals up here? And over here, there aren't any. See oh, right yeah. here, those little marks? Yep. They make a huge difference. They're colored exactly the same way, except for these little marks on the ends of the petals. And why that is, is when you look at a real flower picture, the, where the ends of the petals here, where the ends of the petals have these little dips in them, like here and here, and over here, there's a little line right there. And here's a little dip in the end of the petal. And here's another little dip. When that happens, that actually is where the petal kind of folds in on itself. And so if you, if you mark these and learn to do this, it will make your petals look like they're folding more and they're more um, not so stiff. All. Now, if I showed you this and it was blended well, you'd go, oh, yeah, that looks great. But then if I show you this, you're going, what is different about that? There's something different. Well, it's because it's got these marks in it, because it shows you where the petal kind of goes like this, like kind of a ruffle. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And it's basically the exact same, except we're just adding that one little more step. So we're kind of adding on top of each other. First, we did the watercolor. Then we colored it all with three matching things matching in the same color family colors then and blended and now we're going to do this where we show that it's a little bit different yes somebody's writing it looks more 3d the purple one and that's exactly yeah. right and the only thing that i did was add these little marks up here so what we're going to do is we're going to take the lightest purple again um, which is this one which is soft lilac and we're going to do the same thing we're just going to do the same thing and add the light color. Like I said, I'm not worrying about the centers or anything while we're doing this. Add the light color and get it on there enough that there's enough to blend with. Okay, now I'm going to take the darkest color just like we did the last time. And I'm going to put flicks down here on the bottom closest to the center because that's where the darkest colors are in a natural flower. And then oh, I should have picked a different, a different petal. Up here, there's a little indent, so I'm gonna put a little thing there. That's the only one on this petal. And then I'm gonna take my medium color, just like I did last time, and extend this up from the center in little flicks. 
and I'm going to go up on this mark and make a little, a little mark right on top of and next to it like that. Right, so this has dark and medium in it. I don't like the way that blended down there. So I'm just going to add some more medium here. And then I'm going to take the lighter color like we did before and just come down and do exactly the same thing. So it goes light, dark, medium, light. We'll see how that blends, but you can see that mark right there. Now that doesn't look like it's any that big deal, but when it gets done, let's try one with more, more marks on it. Color it with the light one. Anytime you see these little indents in the ends of the petals, you want to make sure, now this is again a step up, but when you want to do something at this level, you want to make sure that you acknowledge those and you don't just leave them like this. So I'm going to take my darkest color and I'm going to make the flicks from the bottom, just like we did down here at the bottom, just like that. And then I'm going to do a little bit here and a little bit there because you can see how that kind of curves this and then it goes up and then it curves this way. So then I'm going to take my medium color and I'm going to continue my flicks out from the bottom. And you want to do it kind of in the shape of the, so if the flower goes like this, you want to make your flicks go like that. And then I'm going to make just a little, a little medium color right on top of and next to what I did with the dark one. And then I'm going to take my light one and just color all the way all over that again to blend it all. Okay, because so now you see those two little marks there? I hope. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, this one was done in hydrangea and some different markers, different purples, but you can see how that adds. It makes the flower, it makes even like this one that's dried. You can see how it makes it look like the flower is a little bit indented there and that makes it look more realistic. So if we do one like this, again, I'm going to just color all this in. I'm kind of going to use those little circles because remember I told you that the circular motion adds more saturation than the other methods of filling it in. So I'm doing the little circles to add a little bit more saturation so I get a little wetter to blend. And then I'm taking the dark, darkest one and making flicks that are in the shape of the petal that go the direction that the petal goes. So if the petal is going this way, I don't want to be flicking this way. You know what I'm saying? If this is shaped like this, my, my, I'm not flicking, but they need to go like that, not like against the grain like that, right? You want to see the way the petal is shaped. Oops, I'm talking and I didn't do it. So here, this has an indent here. So I'm going to make a little bit of a thing there and maybe a little one on that side and then a little one coming down here and a little one coming down there. And then I'm going to take my middle marker and just go over those a little bit, just like that. And then do my, my flicks coming out like this. And then I'm going to take my light marker and go back over it all. Positive feedback. You're, you're doing an ex excellent explanation of blending. I didn't know to color the whole petal first to make it damp. Well, a lot of people so don't people do that. Really getting it. But yeah. you know where I picked that up from is when I watch these commercial artists, that's what they do. And a lot of people don't do that in card making, but I'm like, once I tried it, I'm like, whoa, things blended a lot easier because the paper was wet. Duh. That makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so there, now you can see if I hold that up and I hold this one up that we just did, 
you can see how the adding those little lines on the end add more detail and makes it more uh, realistic. Can you see that, how these added that? Yeah, thumbs and, up. Yeah, and it's not very hard to do. You just look at the way that the lines are coming in and you know, make them just look like a little extensions of those lines. It's not very hard. It's just, you know, just knowing to do it like that. Yeah. Awesome. Right? My flower looks um, more detailed. Great. Great. I'm giving you thumbs up. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much, you guys. It's not as hard as you think if you do it, learn to do it the right way is what I discovered. Okay, so the next example I give you, we're moving this up one more notch. Okay, and this is this one. Now, how this is a different flower, by the way, because I wanted to, to show you a different flower and I use this delicate primrose, but it really doesn't make any difference. It just needs a flower that has overlapping petals and, um, and the one that we've been practicing on doesn't. And I wanted to show you the, the like a stepped up version. Let me get um, three other colors here. Oh, we haven't done blue, let's do blue. Okay, I picked, um, oh, I want the light one, not this one. A sea glass, ocean waves, desert night. And these are all meant to go together. These are turquoise and these are more blue. Now, Somebody mentioned that the refills are on sale today and tomorrow at Altenu for the markers. Are they? Somebody also, said that. I, I, I didn't verify. Well, I don't know either. But OK, now on this flower, what's different than this flower? What's different is you can see that these petals overlap. And these do, too, a little bit right here, but not enough to make it a big deal. But I purposely picked this for our examples because it's easier and they don't overlap. But when they do overlap, it's just one more step. Just like we said, OK, on, on this one, we added the one more step of putting the little, the little lines at the top. Now we're going to go one step further, right? And the one step further on this is where these petals overlap here. You can see this petal is on top of this one and this one. This one is behind both of these. This one's on top of this one, but be underneath that one. So, okay, how do I deal with something that's not just straightforward petals like this? Well, believe it or not, it's just as easy as what we've been doing. Okay, I know that doesn't seem like it would be, but it is because all we wanna do is add one more step of shading. So we're gonna do the very same thing that we've been doing, okay? We're gonna do, let's do um, this petal right here, this one right here, that's on top of this one and underneath this one. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the same thing, same process. Get it wet with the lightest color. Okay, I'm getting it all wet. Now, the flicking is all going to go out from the center this way, right, when we start. But here's what we do. Where petals overlap, they put a shadow on the petal below it. So it's darker in here because this petal is above that petal. So on the bottom petal, there's gonna be a little shadow. So here's what we're gonna do. It's really easy. All we're gonna do is when we go to make the flicks with the darkest one, which is our next step, we're gonna go along here. Now, depending on the size of the flower, this is a tiny flower. So I'm just gonna put a very little light line that goes right along the edge of that. And then I'm going to do my flicks just like I would. And I'm not going to do it over here because this flower, this petal is on top on this edge, but it's below on this edge. So you only do it on the one that's below, the edge that's below the one on top of it. So now I'm going to just do the same thing and do the medium flicks just out from just like before. Hopefully I haven't talked so much that it's not blending because it's dried out. I hope not. 
And then we're gonna take the light one and blend just like what we did. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I was talking so much about that shadow that I didn't put in the, uh, the little line here. I'm gonna add that little line in and then I'm gonna blend with my light one. And then if I don't think I added enough of a shadow there, which I think I could add a little bit more, I'm gonna go and put a little bit more in there to make it look distinct. And then I'm gonna blend it out with my medium one, a little bit, and then with my light one, Now, right now, you can't tell that there's much difference, but let's do another one. We're going to do this one, which is below both of the other layers, this, this petal and this petal are on top of this petal. So we're going to do getting it wet. What time is it, Lori? It is 421. Okay, and then we're gonna take our, uh, our darkest one again. Now, this one overlaps here and here, it's below it. So when it's below it, I'm gonna make a little bit of a shadow. Now, if you've got a bigger flower, you know, you've got a flower like this, it's gonna be more of a shadow than this. I'm putting just a tiny line around there because this is a tiny flower. And then I'm gonna make some flicks out the middle like that. Okay, is everybody with me so far? And I'm gonna I make a so. little, I'm gonna put a little line down there like what we learned to do. Now I'm gonna do the medium one. And now I'm gonna blend it all with the light one. Oh, I didn't put the medium one up here. I'm thinking faster than I'm doing. Now, I will tell you right now that there are more advanced ways of blending that make it look much more dramatic and almost unrealistic, but boy, does it look artsy. And some people are so good at it, like J.C. Gaspar. He's just an artist. And he went to art school, so no wonder he, you know, he was a professional artist. So there are ways to do it, but for everyday people like you and me, this is the way that you can make it look fabulous without it looking, you know, like you're a beginner. Now, here's the thing. Look at how that shading around here makes it look like it's, it's um, it really accentuates that this one is below these two. Let's, let's do this one and we'll see. So this is the, the last step up in this um, all in the same color family. And I'm hoping that you guys think you can do this now. What do you think? Do I see thumbs up for those people who think they... With practice? Yeah, lots, lots of thumbs ups. Someone said you've explained it so well. Somebody said practice, practice. Practice. Practice, practice. With practice. <laughs> Somebody's added. <laughs> well, it is with practice. I mean, it is, isn't it? But it's doable, okay? This is the thing. I look at some things and I think, I don't think I could do them no matter how much practice I have. But this skill is learnable with practice and it's not real complicated. It's just a matter of, of learning to do it and doing it over and over and seeing how it all works together. But I'm telling you what, it's a thousand times easier when you have a wet surface to do it on. When it's all wet, it blends. If it dries out too much, if you have a problem with it blending, and now I'm not talking perfect, perfect, perfect blending, but you know, where it looks like it's shaded and everything. And if you have a problem with it blending this much, you've either got paper that's too absorbent and isn't going to be good for the alcohol inks, or you haven't got it wet enough to blend because when they're wet, they will blend. So now can you guys see 
Let's put this the same direction. Can you guys see how um, by adding that darker area in here, it really gives it a 3D look and you can see that they overlap the way that they do? Yep, somebody says it's beautiful. Thank you, Sandy, I've learned a lot. Somebody said, now I know I can do this. That's what I wanna hear. I want to help you know you can do it. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it, trust me. I've never had an art class in my life, so. Except for when I taught elementary school and when I first started teaching 50 years ago, I taught elementary school and I took a class teaching art in elementary school. That's the extent of my art classes. And I don't think that quite the same thing qualifies. So these are great I, techniques, very helpful. Okay, great. That's what I want to hear. Not that I have great techniques, but that you understand it enough that you can do it yourself. So we did four levels, right? We did the easy, just put it on there and blend the two colors together, watercolor step. Somebody did ask, um, I know we're focusing on flowers, but is it basically the same for leaves? Yes, yes. In fact, I'll show you. I don't have a leaf printed, but I'll show you in just a second. So then we did this one, which is the three colors, but no additional anything. That's the next step, okay? Then we did the next step up, which we said the three colors that we blended, and then we added the little, the little in, uh, what do you call those? Folds in the end of the petals. And then on this one, we added where the petals overlap, um, we put the dark shading. Now, when you're talking about coloring a rose or something with tons of petals, it's all the same principle. But again, um, I would try to, I would try to, um, to stick with flowers that are pretty simple to start with, because if you start challenging yourself to do something really hard, you're gonna get discouraged and you don't wanna get discouraged. You wanna just feel good about what you're doing. So pick pa uh, patterns that are open petals and maybe have a little overlap and just do these steps that we did. Wet it, right? Here's the steps. We wet it down with the lighter one, the darker one we flick from the middle of the, of the center of the flower. And then we do the little um, petal folds at the top. And then we do the middle one, the same thing, just moving it out further and blending it in the petal folds. And then we blend the whole thing with the light one again and voila. And then you add the shading if there's the overlapping petal situation. So are those thumbs up for that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, lots of thumbs up. Somebody okay. said very, very helpful. Thank you for all your preparation on the behalf. On behalf, you gave the how and the why of it all, and, and added confidence to do it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good, this good, is very good. Helpful. Thumbs up. Good, you yes. guys. Thanks. That's what I want you to feel confident when you leave here. Maybe not like, oh, I'm going to be an expert. No. But if I practice and if I just try these methods and I do step one, step two, step three, step four, I can do it. That's what we want. So this one is an example of blending three colors together that are different. They're not all from the same color family. Where's my camera? There it is. Um, I have Sunkissed, Buttercream and Rouge. And I kind of like this orangey yellow pink combination so now i have a question mm -hmm. the ends of your markers don't look like the ends of my markers at all well that's because they sell they don't have it for the latest ones do i still have that over here i did have hold on hold on i still have it over here they sell stickers for the ends. Oh, those are stickers on there. Yes, they sell stickers for the ends with the names on them and not the numbers. All right. Okay, yeah, so I have them. Me. There's four stickers for each color. So I have them on both ends and then I have one in the middle so I can read it instead of um, the little teeny tiny. Yeah, thing. somebody said that, that theirs didn't have the, the name and I 
said, well, it's it's very tiny. <laughs> it's on yeah, a it is label. very tiny. And so I need my glasses to read it, my flip downs. But um, they do sell these, but they don't have them for the latest release in the markers. At least I haven't seen them. So um, that's what that is. OK, so I have these three colors. They're kind of orangey, pinky, and yellow. OK. And um, I'm going to take the lightest of the three. Now, this is easier to do with light colors than it is with dark colors. Like I said earlier, when you're blending two or more colors together, I would start with light, light colors because they blend easier. But I'm going to take the lightest of the three, and I'm going to just do a small small one here. We're just going to do it in plain. And this is, this is buttercream. Same, same exact process, OK? No different. We're just doing it with three markers that aren't the same colors. So I'm wetting it down with the buttercream, which is the lightest. And then I think I'll do the orange. Oh, yeah. Change my mind. Do the orange here at the center. Same process. No, nothing different. Then I'm going to do the pink one and extend that out. And you can see it's blending, just me doing that. I'm not doing anything to blend that. And it blended just perfect. And then I'm taking the yellow one again and doing the same thing we did. Now, I didn't do these little petal folds because I'm just talking about the blending. But here you can see it blended perfect with three different colors, just doing the same exact the same exact process, coloring it, getting it a little saturated. Now, again, you're going to see a lot of people not tell you this, and they do it their own way, and it works, and it looks great. But boy, this works for me, So, and it makes sense. So that's why I've started doing it this way. Somebody so I, said that the stickers have been out for at least six months. They um, have been out. They've been out for a long time, but not for the latest releases of the markers. My, I got the latest last two sets of markers, and they don't have the stickers out on them yet that I've seen. But they and do for the originals. Somebody wanted to know the names of your colors again that you're using. I'm using. Hold on a minute. I'm using buttercream, rouge, and sunkissed. And they're from three different color families. But I wanted to show you how if you take three light colors or pretty light, light to medium, you can get them to blend as easy as that. And it looks like a gradiated petal. You know, it's really cool. Kind of going from one color to another. But again, what can somebody type in the chat? What? is important to get it to blend that easily. What are some of the factors that we want to look, look at or be aware of? Nobody's answering. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be wet. It's got to be wet. OK. Saturation, um, right? Saturation, yeah. Mm -hmm. Saturate it with the light first, right? And because I don't want you to get off of here and go, what did she say? Saturated with the light. I will reiterate all this in the. Uh, go from light to dark. Go from, well, you go from light to the darkest and then to the middle and then back to the light. Somebody wants to know how to use the blending pen. Oh, we're going to dip there. We have okay. a half hour left, everybody. We're getting there. Don't worry. Okay, here's my rouge. And then here's my yellow. We're getting there, but if we don't know how to do this, we're, oops, that was not my yellow. No big deal. I just blend it right back out, even though I used the wrong color up there. Doesn't matter. This petal is just a little bit more orangey at the tip. Remember that flowers are not perfect. So if your petals look a little bit different from each other, they actually look more realistic. Okay. 
So saturation is important, not oversaturation though, because what happens is if you get it on paper where it's oversaturated, you try to put more color into it and it won't accept it. It just is super saturated and won't accept any more color. So that's why the saturation level, when I rated all those papers, the higher saturation level is the better of the options because that allows you to add more layers to make the blending easier and look better. Does that make sense? Now I wanna show you these and I'm not gonna color them other than just real um, basic here. These are both no line coloring. And I just wanted to show you what I do. Can you see, can you see those light lines on there? Barely. Yeah, well, that's the whole concept is that you want to, you want to stamp it in an ink that's, this is the lightest gray. And over here, I did the lightest of the colors I was using. So when you actually go to saturate it, like if I was taking this light, the lightest purple here, and I was going to saturate it with it, I would just go right over that, you know, on top of that line when I was doing the initial saturation, and it'll just cover up that light line. They're dark enough that I can see them, but they're not dark enough that it's going to um, be seen even, it'll merge into my ink. So you can see that. You can't see the outside line, but you can see them. I can see them to yeah. color it. There, there, we can see it. We can see it barely, but it, yeah. Yeah. So that's Roberta how you do. To, Roberta wants to know how to get a, a, a lighter. I'm too heavy handed. What can I do to get less pressure? You practice, you know, and the further, here's another thing. It's just like with colored pencils, the same way you hold your, marker further up the marker and you do it this way and that will force you to do lighter it also forces you to go slower because it's not as easy to color but it's a way of training yourself to put lighter a lighter touch that's a great tip so hold the marker up further to train yourself to be lighter and you get the feeling if you hold it up, somebody do that now, hold your marker up like that and try to color something and see if it doesn't make you do lighter. And let me know. See if that works for you. This one, I wanted to show you one more thing and we're gonna get their blender pen out for this one and then we're switching to blender, blender pen ideas. Okay. Somebody said that that actually works better for them. Oh, good. Good. If you want to do no line coloring and you want to have it kind of white in the end, the flower, here's what you can do with your blender pen. Now, let me say, the blender pens are not meant for blending. Why they call them blender pens, who knows? Just to be confusing. They're not typically meant for blending and I'll show you what they are meant for, but, um, in this example, we're going to kind of use it for blending. These commercial artists, one of them that I watched said it's called blending to white. And you can put a light color in the middle, you know, with your, with your flicks, leave the rest of the, leave the rest of it white, make sure you put enough ink in here. And then you can use your blender tip and just like you would with the medium color, pick up the, the, the color in the, in the um, flicks and push it out into the rest of the petal. Now I tried this also doing it like wetting it with the blender pen to get it saturated. And that worked too, um, so that these flicks would be in a saturated place. Um, see what you want, see what works for you, but if you want to try to blend it out into white, it kind of makes a, the color, well, it isn't dry yet, but it kind of makes the color just kind of fade. I don't know if you can see how that's shaded there. Yes. Can you see that shading? It's really subtle. Somebody wants you to explain the part about the blender pen one more time. Okay. 
this, this is not meant for blending. And this is the only situation that I have ever seen it talked about for blending is this example where you're wanting to make white flowers and you want, but you don't want it just to be white cardstock. So, so you can use the blender pen just like you would the light color, but just do it down here by the middle because you're not going to color the tips of the flowers. And then use your light color and do flicks just like you normally would, but use it with a light color because you want a white flower. You don't want it to be too dark. Then take the blender and just kind of use flicks to kind of spread this out further in the petal. And what it does is it kind of dilutes it and makes it shaded like that. Can you see that? So play with that because I haven't done that much with it, but you can see how then if you cut this flower out, there's the petals. And I was wondering like if you did that and then maybe you put like a, um, you know, like a clear sparkly on there, if that would make it look, I don't know, but I wanted to show it to you because that's, that's one thing you can do with the blender that isn't the way it's meant to be used, but okay. Moving right somebody, along. Somebody did mention that you can also use the blender pen if you go outside the line to kind of- Yeah, move that's what we're gonna do right now. Okay. It's on page nine at the bottom of your handout. And here's my little thing here. It will fix small mistakes. So I'm gonna make a mistake on here. I don't know what, what uh, ink I used. I think I used Pinkalicious on this or something like that, but I'm gonna make a little line coming out that I, I overdid it. Okay. Can everybody see my little mistake right there? Yes. That little line. This is what I did on this side too. I wanted to show you, you can, that the, the blender pen, the blender pen pushes ink. It doesn't, it, it doesn't, it's not an eraser. If I've got this colored here and I want to make a little insert, I can actually just push the ink. It might take a little while, this is a dark color, but I can actually push the ink, let it dry a minute. I'll start on this up here for this fixing of this. You don't do like an eraser. You're actually pushing the color back into the main body of the, of the color. And you don't want to start coloring like this to try to erase it because it'll spread the ink all over the place. So you want to just go from the outside like you're pushing like that. And you have to be patient because you have to let it dry a little bit in between. It's not an instant process, but you can see how it's removing the color, but it's not removing the color as an eraser. It's removing it because you're actually, because it's saturating it, it's pushing it back. If you try to erase it, it'll spread pink ink all over your whole your whole uh, white cardstock and then it defeats the purpose. But you have to kind of wait and let it sit for a second in between to kind of do its work. So it's, I said on the handout, patience is a virtue on this. See how that makes that indentation there? How it's starting to indent right there where I, right here, whoop, here. Yes. It's starting to go in and this one's getting smaller because I'm, I'm pushing, I'm getting it wet and I'm just pushing it. And this is the right technique with the blender pen. Like I said, if you just try to try to go in and do this, it's gonna spread that pink ink all over the place. But if you just push like this, it will make the, the space where you want the indent or where you want to get rid of your little mistake but it's not like just go in and erase it. It's a, it's a process, but you can see how that's getting rid of that. Can you see that? Yeah, somebody yeah. made a, a comment. Um, I believe the blender is, is 
shoot, wait a minute, it scrolled, it is just a form of alcohol. And I don't have a blender pen and I just got my my 90% alcohol and a Q-tip. And I had, exactly. a little, I had a little mistake and I just held the Q-tip there and let it saturate it and then pushed it in and it worked. Yeah, yeah, this is all just basically a form of alcohol. It just, all it does is get it saturated and then moves it. So you're not wanting to blend it. So you're not wanting to go around in circles. You're just wanting to move it and with the saturation. And then that took out my, my mistake right there completely. And down here, I made an indent into the, into the pink. Does everybody see that? Yeah. So that's the way you correctly use it by just being patient and pushing those color back and not around and around like erasing. So does that make sense to everybody? Thumbs up yeah. if it does. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we got thumbs up coming. Okay, good. Thank you. Thought I was supposed to, wait a minute, thought I was supposed to use it like an eraser and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Never used my blender pen before. <laughs> Yeah. And thumbs up. Yeah. Well, surprise, surprise, right? I mean, it's now you can see on this paper that I was already that I was doing. This is 80, 80 cardstock. And you can see there's some bleeding in it. With the other papers that we were talking about, it doesn't bleed like this at all. But this next one I wanted to show you. It's kind of fun. It's where you can actually use your blender pen to make texture. Oh my gosh, I'm going to do a, <clears throat> I am going to do a screenshot of the one commercial artist that I watched who used these dots. She draws shoes and she does it for commercial art and she draws these shoes and she drew these silver shoes and showed from, she did it from scratch and she showed how she uses these dots to make this texture on these shoes. It was amazing i was just totally blown away but she used this very same process i mean so you can just once again here's your flower or whatever you're doing or background or whatever i'm just putting this on really fast and all you do with your blender pen let's get it wet right you want it wet. All you want to do with your blender pen, either end, to make dots, you just hold it there for a minute. Now, what's going to happen? What happens is, you know oh, how when like you put, invisible ink, somebody said. Yeah, you know how when you um, put oil in water and it beads up and it like spreads out like that that's you're doing the same thing as when we were just pushing the ink you're just making it in a pattern so you're just adding this and when the when it goes down into the surface into the ink the ink starts drawing out like that and it makes patterns in the in your ink and um I saw somebody do this with like a house, like they colored the house with alcohol markers. And then they did like the roof, they did different textures and things in it. And it was so cool the way it looked. But you can play with this and see how it makes us really, oh, maybe you can't see. Maybe it's too far away. Somebody said, but you wouldn't want to do that kind of technique on a flower, would you? Well, I don't know. Would you? It depends. Do you want it to look realistic or do you want it to look kind of like nifty and uh, artistic and people to say, whoa, how did you make your flower petal look like that? You know, and, you can do anything, right? You can do anything. And somebody else wants to know, does it leave residue on the blender pen? No. It, if it does, let me show you how to get rid of it. But first, I'm going to do this. Hold on. Just show you. I want to get it wet again. Somebody you said can, it would be great for raindrops, raindrops on yes. flowers. Yes. Oh, I want to show you a way to do it too, a raindrop. It was another pressure thing that I didn't put on my handout because I forgot. Thank you for the reminder. Now, see here, I'm making stripes. 
You have to wait for a minute to work. But can you see the stripes I put in there? Absolutely. It's kind of really fun. They call it, the artists call it mark making. See those stripes? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now let me show you raindrops. Hold on a second. I need to get not the blender pen, but my regular one. They use the brush tip and they just push it down like that. Just pushing the blender pin. Can you see how that looks like raindrops? Cool. Doesn't that look cool? They also made flowers like this. Just pushing the blender. I sort of did it backwards, but you can see how that made a flower. Just yeah, look at really, how those raindrops really, yep, look. Yep. Is that cool? You just push it down like that. That would look really neat in the background, wouldn't it? Now it's raining. Yes. Cool. So that's another thing. It's mark making. Playing around with your blender pen and just seeing what you can do with it that way. And then another use for it, and I'm not going to I'm not going to demonstrate it, but in this balloon, how did I make that highlight there by doing the same thing with my blender pen? You can see that yeah. little highlight on the balloon. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. So when you get really advanced, which I am not, but when you get really advanced, you can make highlights on your um, flowers the same way, like where the light is hitting it and all that kind of thing. But, um, you know, that's kind of beyond my level. I don't think I, I would have to really practice to learn how to do that. But you can. Okay, so moving along We've from the blender pen. Eight minutes. Yeah, we're just going to finish right on time. Okay, good. You can, I don't know if you can see this, but you can color on glitter paper. And... You can experiment on it. I, this is kind of a silver glitter, and I just colored on it. You can do that, and it won't damage the ends. I looked on several sites, and it said, no, glitter paper will not damage the ends. And a couple other people said you can do it when you've got real glitter, and you put it into like a double-stick adhe double adhesive sheet, um, and, you've, and you've put your glitter in like that and made sure it's on the sheet. You can color that, too. But... I haven't really tried it, but it's something you can do. So just to be aware, that's something you can do. One Somebody thing that wanted to go back on the blender pen, and, and what about the ink that's left on it? Oh, oh, sorry that I didn't tell you. Thank you for reminding me. It's kind of hard to remember everything. Okay, all you do is you just do it on a plain piece of paper until it's clear. And you may see some ink on the end, but it's stained. It's not it's not ink that's going to come out of the pen. Cause you can see here, this is all clear now. So just do it on a spare piece of paper to get it until it's clear and then it's fine. Does that make sense? Yes. And can they be refilled? Um, I have, for Altenew, I have not seen a, a refill thing. I almost did it with straight alcohol. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> I thought, hey, maybe I could just refill it with alcohol. Then I thought maybe it would not be a good idea. So I bought a new pin. So I, I don't know, to tell you the honest well, truth. The, the first pen that you that's empty, you could try it. You know, I know. Work. I mean, you know, it's empty I mean, anyway, right? Yes, I do have my empty one still. So you know, maybe I could try that and let let you know. But this Tim is something Holt, Tim what? helps. It says Tim helps uh, sells refills. So you probably could use a refill you from probably any could, brand. Couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, you probably could. So this is something I do all the time with my alcohol markers, and I wanted to show it to you. You guys saw it if you were at my last at my last one, but you can make your own embellishments by coloring them with alcohol markers. So if you're coloring your flower this color or your main whatever, you can you can make your own alcohol embellishment or your own embellishments to do it. So all you have to do is take your Take a marker. This is what I did here was I took a piece of this um, post-it tape. I cut it down for this so I could take a picture of it. 
but and just rolled it so it could stick to my surface and then I put my little pearls or sequins or whatever on it can you see that mm -hmm. see how I stuck it there yeah. right and then all you do is color it with your alcohol marker and you can have custom colored sequins or pearls or anything like that um, that match your that match your card when you don't have to um, um, what am I trying to say? You don't have to buy pearls in 50 colors is what I'm trying to say. It'll match right. whatever color you're using. I do it all the time. That's and then it cool. dries real quick. And then you just peel it off, you know, like that and stick it on your card. It's wonderful. It's just there. I made a pink one. These are the purple ones. Kathleen, like, I'd like you to show the raindrops one more time. Okay. How you made the raindrops. Let's make purple raindrops. What, why not, huh? Okay, you take your brush tip and you don't do, all you do is just put it down like that. Just lay it down on the surface, just like that. Does that make sense? You just take the side of it and lay it like that. That is super easy. Isn't that cool? Looks Any so chance you can do some leaves, somebody asks. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you for reminding me. Let's draw a leaf. Let's draw a leaf with a pencil here. Oh, if I don't break my pencil lead. I meant to stamp some out, but you know, I didn't. So this is, you can tell I'm not an artist. Okay, let me get some green some greens going here same thing start with your light one this is frayed leaf same principle right you color it all in to get it saturated can you guys see this i'm just getting it all wet then you take your dark one just like we did those those um those little niches at the top of the petals right you're going to take your darkest one um this one got a little bit see how it went down the sides when i <laughs> was refilling it i had a little Oops. problem and you go up and you and you follow the little veins don't have to be perfect because leaves aren't perfect right and then you flick from the bottom of the leaf because again the darkest colors are closest to the stems and oftentimes i just do two colors i grabbed three on this but most of the time i just do mine with these two with frayed leaf and forest glades but here's the middle one and i'm just going to go up the middle kind of give it a little bit more intensity. And then I'm going to take the frayed leaf. Remember, this is not perfect. I'm not doing this, spending a lot of time on this, but it's giving you the idea. See, I think that that evergreen is too dark on the bottom of this petal. I think if I had it to do over, I would probably just use the forest glades because that evergreen is super dark. Let's try that. Don't be afraid to just pull out a piece of scratch paper and, and do something like this on your own to see what colors work together for you. See, I like that look much better with it this being the darkest one, even though it's really a mid color. Um, Regina wants to show you her flowers to see if Okay, a... hold on a second. Let us get to the end. And then we'll put it back on the sharing. And, um, and uh, if people need to go, they can go. So okay, now see how that's just like the mid one. And I think I would still put some, some more up here darker, just play with it. But basically, you want it just like the, just like the flowers, the darker at the bottom, and I'm not even officially flicking, but 
you can see the shading in this. This one is just too dark. Yeah. But you can see the shading in that. It's it's just a matter of keep it at do the same thing as the flower petals, but do and do the darkest at the bottom. But most of the time on flowers, I just use two colors some, on leaves. Sometimes I use three if I'm using the parrot, the yellow greens. But this one's just too dark, I think, to blend really well. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And the last one we're going to do is so easy. And if you saw my last vid video tutorial, did any of you watch the, my YouTube video with the vellum flowers on it that I just put up this week? If you didn't, I... it's had a lot of views, so I don't know if some of you have watched it or not, but. I've got two thumbs up. Uh, somebody said yes. I have, a, I have a video up right now on, on making vellum flowers. So you really should watch it if you're interested in the process. But um, I, I gold embossed the outline. And here's what I want to tell you that isn't in the video that I've discovered kind of since playing with it, is that I found that the nib tip, not the brush tip, but the nib tip actually works better on vellum than the brush tip does. And I don't have that in my video because I didn't discover it until just now, just this last week. But you do the same thing, but you do it on the back of the vellum. And I'm using the nib tip. It seems to blend better on vellum. And I wish I had known that when I did my other video, but I didn't. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to do little lines rather than the rather than the um, flicks because I'm using this end of this pen. But you do it on the back and you just do the basic same thing, but I'm only using two colors now. And here you can see how that looks on the front. Your vellum and, um, tutorials on the uh, YouTube on your YouTube channel, right? Yes, it is. Um, and I posted the card on my Facebook this week and also on the Alta New fan page and a bunch of other places. So there's the link a lot of places, but I'll put it on my email tomorrow too. But you can see how that how that blends. It's just super easy and it's easy for beginners. So you just start with the lightest one or you can just color it plain. You don't have to blend anything. But you do it on the back, and so it's really forgiving because that vellum has that has that um, kind of frosty look to it. So you don't see every little detail because you're looking through the vellum when you turn it around to the other side. So there you can see if I put it on white. See? Nice. And see the gold. Um, wait. Oh yeah. Wait. Can you see the gold shiny? Yes. With it? Yeah. So I want to make sure I showed you that. Heavy the vellum is. Um, this is just regular vellum. It's not heavyweight. You can see it's just, it's Michael's vellum. So no big fancy thing. So. And I'm going to answer, I'm going to add to that. I got heavyweight vellum and it doesn't show through nearly as much. And I'm sorry, I got the heavyweight. Really? Yeah. Because I do a lot of that with uh, the marker. Yeah, I, I think this is this is a good weight. And like I said, it's just Michael's vellum. It's cheap vellum, but it works really well for flowers. So um, I did 3D flat vellum flowers on this card and I walk you through the entire, just like we did today. It doesn't speed up. I've had so many people tell me um, they do not want me to speed up my videos. They want me to just do the whole process. So now I have a disclaimer at the beginning of my video saying, due to my subscribers demand, I don't speed up my videos, but you can fast forward it if you want to. So, so I walk you through the whole process, but these, it has 3D vellum flowers on it and it's really pretty. So if you want to look that up, um, it goes into a lot of detail about it. So. I think we're finishing on time other than other comments or yeah. questions. Somebody said, Sandy, you are the most generous of teachers. The research, the trial and error you experience on behalf of your attendees is worth worthy of a medal. 
Not oh. only was this an excellent, very instructive class, but we have in hand your incredible resource guide. You are amazing. Oh, that's very sweet of you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And Thank lots you. and lots. I hope you can see all this because there's lots and lots of thumbs up. I can't see it right now. Maybe I'll be able to see it on the chat. I just, those of you who know me here, I'm going to change my camera back. See my glasses, I've got them on. Yeah. <laughs> um, those of you who know me and have been to a lot of my things before know that that's what I'm, that's what energizes me is because teaching is my passion. I've taught for 50 years. I feel like it's an incredible blessing that the door is open for me to teach again after I retired. And so if I can help you, that's what motivates me. So I just want to know that whatever I can do to help you is what I want to do. So I it, love this, Sandy. You know, this was a great tutorial. Great. I want to share my flowers. Just I can't okay. believe how they turned out. I'm I'm in awe. Oh, well, show us. <laughs> we Let's see. see them. I do want to see it. Let me put it on speaker. I think it is on speaker. So if you just start talking and show them, I think we'll see them. Okay. I'm putting up little, the purple oh, one my goodness. and the blue one first. And I did the dry at first on the one purple, you can tell, uh -huh. and then went with the wet. And wow, the difference between it the wet. It is easier, isn't it? Oh, on the, the dry purple one, did you try the, yeah, on that one, yeah. I can and see that you did it dry. The one, this is the one with the orange and the Good. Pink. But Good. These, the blue and the purple one with the three color is just amazing. Oh, good. Now, see, that's not even with any practice. No. Look. First time I did this technique. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Thank you so much. You can much. do it. You can do it. That's what I want to communicate. You can yep. do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Right? Thank you. Yes. Good. I'm so glad to see a smile on your face, Tina. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. This was a great tutorial. Thanks, great. sweetie. Thank you. I can't wait to jump off now and see the vellum flower tutorial. I haven't seen it yet. Well, you need to look at it. It's, it's, I, I, I'll tell you what, and I say it on the video. It has, it has a um, new stamp set from Altenew called Wispy Joy. And we, I did the blog hop with it um, and um, on my blog. But we had trouble with the, you know, the whole supply chain issue that's going on now. And so we didn't right. get the dies. So I had to make a card for, for um, uh, the blog without a die. And so I did all this layering and masking and stuff. I mean, four layers of masking. And I just kind of like challenged myself to make that happen. And I did. But when it came to, oh, I've got to do the video hop, I'm like, uh, there is no way, unless I want to do a three-hour video, that there, we're going to be able to go through four layers of masking. So I had to decide, okay, I'm going to design a new card with the same set. And that's when I came up with these uh, 3D vellum uh, flowers. And, <laughs> oh, my gosh, they look great. I was so, like, I'm glad I had to do it because I really love this card. <laughs> so awesome. that's how it all came about. So I hope awesome. you like it, too. I yeah. do. Yeah. Well, thank you for everything. And again, your classes are just awesome. Well, you're welcome. I don't want to miss any it. of them. I <laughs> appreciate you, it, Tina. Thank you. I'm glad you're feeling better and you're over COVID. Thank you. And mm -hmm. thank you so much, Lori, for helping. Yep. Oh, you're welcome. You're always That's a hard a good job. Help. That's a hard it job. Is. It is. So does what any... is your next class, Sandy? Um, I am taking the summer off. Uh, okay. I have... We, we have had um, we have had uh, uh, between COVID and everything we've lived here for for almost four years, but we haven't um, done much. So in June, I'm taking three months, three weeks off with my hubby, and we're taking our new RV and driving around Alaska and seeing a lot of the sites that we haven't seen yet. And then in Good July, I have my California daughter and her husband and three grandkids coming for a few weeks. So I'm excited about that. I Good. haven't seen them in three years. And, you know, Good kids, you. Oh they've goodness. grown a lot. And then my aunt, who is um, 
nine years older than me, but I'm an only child and she's kind of like more like a big sister to me. She's, she's 20 years younger than my dad and nine years older than me. So she's technically my aunt, but anyway, I haven't seen her in probably 10 years and she's coming for a couple of weeks in August. So I just decided I'm going to try to, to, I'm going to be doing videos. I'm going to, so if you're interested in watching tutorials on video i'm going to do those in between so you can subscribe Mm -hmm. to my youtube and then or and or the the uh, facebook group and know when all that comes out but um so i'm not going to do nothing but i'm going to take off time and not do design team things or or workshops Mm -hmm. because they're very time is important you time's important. Yeah. Andy. And I need a break to tell you the truth. I bet. I need a rest for a while. So, but. Got to work balance. It's important. It is important. It's really important. Yeah, it and, is. and I'm, I've not been feeling real well lately. So I just need some rest time. But yeah. my Facebook group is like super important to me. We have such a wonderful group of people and they all are so encouraging and I just love them. So. Uh, I'll be in there, but I'm not going to do any of this special stuff that takes so much time. It is very time consuming. Plus, on top of it, I want to make some cards for me. I've been so busy (laughs) since January, every month doing guest stuff for all to new, which I'm not complaining about. I mean, it's awfully sweet of them to ask me and I feel really honored to do it. I really do. Mm -hmm. But like I get the Simon Says stamp kits and I get the spellbinders kits and I haven't made one card with either of them all spring and so they're sitting here stacked and so this summer I'm just hoping to to uh have some fun and do some things for me and you know everything so uh I'll be around but not with doing this but in the fall I will be starting workshops again and um I love it I wouldn't I miss you guys if I don't see you so yeah I really do I really do. I'm so glad you are all part of my family now. I'm really That's glad. Good, yeah. Makes me get all choked up. Makes me get all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ladies. How did the rest of your Thank flowers you. turn out? Do you feel like you can do it now? Yes. yes. Good. Thank yes. you. Good. Andy, give me the um, name of your website, and I'm going to type it in the chat here. Um, well, of my blog, it's yeah. San- sandyspoema.com. S A N D E P O. It's got an S. Like S got, yeah. P O E M A dot com. Dot com. All right. Mm-hmm. And I've already put in the chat the link to your YouTube channel. Okay. And the, the handout has the link to the YouTube and it also has a link to the, um, to my Facebook group. And I don't put anything on the blog unless I'm doing, um, the blog hops for all to do. And the reason that I'm not is because although I'm putting some, there's a new blog entry today uh, because it is something for them. I had, um, but um, I don't get any traffic on my blog for all the work it takes to do a blog entry. I -hmm. think people are a lot more into video stuff now. And um, I'm, even though it's time consuming to do video, I feel like I can teach better in video for the time it takes me to do a blog. And I don't get people looking at it because I think it's time consuming for people to just go from blog to blog and do all that reading and all that. So it is. So it for is. the <laughs> amount of effort it takes for me, now Altenew does blog hops. And so everything you see on my blog is basically for a blog hop, other than yeah. there's a page for, for um, upcoming workshops, which I don't have right now. And then there's a page for ordering supplies. Uh, so there's those kinds of things, but, but actual blog entries, I, I, I'm really not doing it. I'm sharing it on my, sharing it on my Facebook group, which we have almost 500 people now, right about. I know that's awesome. I know. I'm so <laughs> blessed. I mean, who knew I'm just totally blown away and, um, and in YouTube, I'm up about 1100 subscribers now. So that's yeah. also, yeah. Awesome. I mean, it's not really? like, you know, a lot of these big shots or anything, but my husband and I were talking last night. I said, that's a thousand people that are looking at my YouTube videos. It just like <laughs> blows me away. I'm like, how did that happen? So, You're growing. You're <laughs> growing. Girl. I don't know. You know what, Tina? I just want to teach people. I love people. I love all of you. And I feel like you're my family. And I 
am so blessed. I'm the one getting blessed here. So I'm I'm very grateful to every single one of you. Oh, very. we're blessed to have you teaching we're, us. Yes, well, we are. We are. I don't know. You're my friends. And that's what I'm here for, right? That was well, awesome. <laughs> well, you make it easy. You make it easy. This well, way. you know what? Somebody told me one time, because you guys don't know this about me. I don't think any of you would know this about me, but I also I have my doctorate in education, but I have a master's of divinity and I've been in ministry for years and years and years and years, decades. And I have mostly I've taught a lot of biblical teaching. And so one of the people that was in one of my classes one time said, you know what, here's what you do. You just connect all the dots so that I know. And now I suddenly understand how this all fits together because you're a connect the dots teacher. <laughs> it's kind of stuck <laughs> with me ever since. That's, that um, is, that's good. That's a good th way to put it. I guess. I don't know. I don't know. It's Sandy. nice to be doing what you know you're called to do, isn't it? Oh, who yes, is it that is. on your lap? Wait a minute. I just saw somebody with a friend on their oh, lap. I did too. Oh, a little Yorkie. Oh, it's a little Yorkie. <laughs> oh, look. Um, oh. Sandy, it wouldn't let me do comments after the beginning. I did a couple. Okay. So I just wanted to tell you how much I appreciated this, how much I learned from it. And thank you so much. As oh, you're always. welcome awesome. so much. You, yeah. you know, you guys can email me anytime um, because I check my email. It's just part of my history. You know, that's what I've been doing for a long time. So I check my email all the time. And if you have any other questions or challenges or whatever, or want my opinion on something, just go ahead and email me or send me pictures of what you do. If you don't belong to my Facebook group where you can post them, which would be nice um, <laughs> for everybody to see. And don't be shy because if you're in there, you know that everybody's nice, right? Yeah. I, and think I, Terry... and I, I comment on every single card. I look at every card and I comment on every one of them because I love to see what you do. So, but you can always email me your cards too. If you're too shy to put cool. them in there, I get that. I so, think Terry wanted to show us something she did before Sandy. She held it up and then. Oh, I we didn't all see it. Oh, ladies, it's been a true pleasure. I have to leave. Uh, family jumped in. So thank you, Miss Sandy, for your time. It's been a wonderful tutorial. I'm looking forward to watching your videos and yeah. participating in future teaching. Oh, so thank you, honey. Thank you. Thanks it, for it coming. Thanks for being essential. here. My first time, but it won't be the last. Oh, Bye. good. Bye, honey. Come back. Oh, you guys. I'm sorry I'm not doing anything till the fall. I really do need a break, though. You do. Yeah, you do. I do. So yep. now what's your, your little your Yorkie's name? Mia Sophia. Mia oh. Sophia. <laughs> That's sweet. Oh. I just Sorry. want to say thank you. Thank you. Bye, Sandy, sweetie. So much. Thank you for Bye. coming. You for it's time to go. Yeah, I know, it's I time know. to go. We all gotta go, but I, I do Thank too. You so much. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. your enjoy summer. summer. <laughs> Thank you. You enjoy okay. your summer too. All Stay right. in touch somehow. I mean it. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay, yeah. sweetie. Thank Thank you, ladies. Ladies. I'll see you later, see you everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.